In a very short time, generative AI has changed the way we perceive art. So what if we want to combine our own imagination with this new technology? How would we go about creating our own avatars, but with our own ideas? Well, in this video, I'll share what I have learned about using Midjourney, which is one of the most advanced publicly available generative AI algorithms to make your own avatars, your own images, application icons, and a bunch of other tips and tricks. Well, let's get started. Okay, how the heck does it even work? I'll try to explain how those algorithms work in the simplest terms I can. Considering the first sentence you usually hear when talking about diffusion algorithms is that it comes from non-equilibrium thermodynamics in physics, it might not be that easy, but I will try to make it as easy as I can. If you don't care how those systems do what they do and just want to learn to control their magic, feel free to skip to the next chapter. Most of today's generative AI algorithms are done to a technique called GAN, or Generative Adversary Networks. It's a technique developed by Ian Goodfellow back in 2014 and has been under heavy research since. And lately, it really opens a world of exciting opportunities. In this family of algorithms, you essentially pit two algorithms against each other, a generator and a discriminator. The discriminator is trained on billions of images to extract a mathematical representation from those images. We call this an embedding. Basically, the discriminator looks at an image and after seeing millions of cats, the algorithms can say, well, yes, this is a cat. I'm here live, it's not, I'm not a cat. Once I give the algorithms a prompt, well, they owe me a cat, the generator begins to generate a random noise for each part of the image and feed it to the discriminator. Until the discriminator says, well, yes, this is indeed a cat. Our image is this noise accepted by the discriminator. Since the discriminator fights the generator, it's essentially its adversary. That's how those algorithms actually got their name. Diffusion algorithms take this idea a step farther. Well, instead of generating just random noise, they are trained on how the noise of billions of images look like, and then apply specific algorithms that were trained on how to clean up noise from images. So the results are a lot more intentional and look more natural. Essentially, you could summarize this process in six steps. Step number one, take billions of images on the internet with the text description of what's on the image. The system learns how each image is encoded and how its corresponding label looks like in a mathematical representation called an embedding. Step number two, take billions of images and slowly add noise to the images, basically lower their quality. Adding a little bit of noise every time around a thousand times. Step number three, show the noisy images to an AI and teach it to clean the noise. Basically teach a machine learning algorithms how to remove the noise step by step to clean the image. Step number four, generate noise that matches the mathematical representation of the image matching the prompts. Step number five, clean up the noise, getting a small but clean image. And finally, step number six, upscale the image, kind of like you know how the FBI shows this enhance in movies? It's kind of like that. Scale up, enhance. This is by no means a comprehensive explanation, and I will link in the description a number of videos and research papers that explain those concepts in a lot more detail and in a more scientific way. All right, by now I think you're probably thinking enough with the mumbo jumbo. How the heck do I make an avatar with mid journey? Well, let's jump into that. I went ahead and set up a copy of Mid Journey for you on the newly launched Hacking Modern Life Discord. So to try all the examples from this video, click the link in the description below, enter the Discord server and go to the Mid Journey channel. So let's try it right now. Imagine pumped a boat sailing into the sunset. By default, Midjourney uses version 3, but its new version 4 that is currently in beta is much more powerful and much more capable. And we're going to be using it for all the examples in the rest of this video. Let's try that same prompt with version 4. To activate version 4, we just do hyphen hyphen V4. In order to not have to add the minus minus v4 every time, we can change it in settings. Press mj version 4 here. And from now on, it will add minus minus v4 
for every prompt we type. You will notice that uh, Midjourney created all those like eight little buttons below the images. By default, Midjourney generates four images and the four buttons on the bottom correspond to the images that generated. U stands for upscale and V stands for variations. If you press U on U1, it will upscale the first image here. So one, two, three, four. Let's upscale that one. It looks the best. If you press V, it will create variations, minor variations on that image. So V4. So those are the variations on uh, that last image. And in a few seconds, we'll see the upscaled version as well. And there it is. A beautiful image of a boat sailing, well, actually from the sunset, but we'll forgive the AI for that today. Now that we got the basics, let's move on to some more advanced prompts. First, if you want to prevent something from appearing in the image, we can always add hyphen hyphen no. So first, let's get rid of the cloud in the image. Imagine we want to get rid of the clouds. By adding the word photo, we can make the images a lot more realistic because then the AI will use images that are actually photos that it was trained on. Now, one of the most powerful things you can do is experiment with the style. The more detailed the style instructions are, the more predictable the image becomes. So let's try a few examples. Now, I want to remind you that the AI has been learning on a bunch of images from the internet. And so if you will add tags that people are likely to add to their photos, you're more likely to get results similar to those images. So for example, photo of a boat sailing into the sunset, ultra realistic, 8K, 85 millimeters, which is the focal length of the lens, DSLR, no clouds. But the AI has also been trained on a bunch of classic artists, and so we can use their style as part of the image as well. A sketch of a boat sailing into the sunset, Leonardo da Vinci style. 8K, no clouds. Or for example, a Leonardo da Vinci sketch of Superman. Because of course the AI has been trained on all kinds of pop culture images, comic books. It knows everything, right? We're talking here 5 billion images. Or for example, Homer Simpson in Van Gogh, Starry Night style, right? Look at that, this is so cool. It really looks like a Van Gogh Starry Night. Another very cool style is Unreal Engine. If you want this 3D rendered style, kind of realistic 3D rendered style, let's say we do Homer Simpson Van Gogh Starry Night style, Unreal Engine. You can also control the light. Cinematic lighting or dramatic lighting will give you more of the light control. Make sure not to confuse lighting with lightning because that will look completely different. Take a look at what I mean. And here you have both dramatic lighting and lightning. Not the same thing. Last part of this section, each word you use can be given a weight by adding colon colon number. So for example, flying pig colon colon zero five, cloud colon colon two, will be a lot more clouds than flying pigs two clouds zero five. And it's very, very different from flying pig, no clouds. By default, everything gets the same weight and so the same importance in the generated image. So, this is flying pig 2, 
clouds 0.5. And you can see that the pig is the main subject of the image. It's big, it's in the center, it's the main part. This is flying pig, no clouds. And this is how we essentially got flying pigs at an airport, I assume. Or I don't know, what the heck is that pig flying, but flying somewhere. And you see that in this version, that is flying pig 05, cloud 2, you basically don't see the flying pig anymore. It's mostly clouds. If you generate an image and notice that an image lacks a bit of small details, you can use the Q parameter to control the quality. If you give an image hyphen hyphen Q2, it will work twice as hard on it. Keep in mind that working twice as hard doesn't mean it will be much better since sometimes the AI can overwork on an image. And even though it's more detailed, it actually looks less realistic or less beautiful to the eye. But in some cases, it can create really beautiful images. And see here, this is the Q2 version, and this is the same prompt with Q1, which is the default. And you can see that, especially here, you see how much less detailed this image is compared to this. With that said, I still think the Q1 in this particular case looks better. You probably noticed that all the images we generated so far had been perfectly square. That's a function of the way that the generative algorithm works, since it generates blocks of pixels. However, you can change the aspect ratio of the image with hyphen hyphen AR3 colon 2 will generate a wide image. 2 hyphen 3 will generate a tall image. So let's now generate both of those and see the difference. So this one is wide. Look how realistically it rendered that bit here. And this one is tall. And some are more realistic and some are less realistic. When an image is being generated, a lot of the parameters that create an image are being generated randomly. However, there is no such thing as random in computers. There are all kinds of algorithms that come up with a pseudo random number. That random number can influence a lot of the things in the image. So what if you generated an image and you want to tweak just a small part of it? Midjourney has a solution for that as well. Next to the image, to the message in Discord, you have a little smiley face here. Press the envelope. And within a few seconds, Midjourney will send you a message with all the information about that specific uh, uh, image, including the seed. The seed is what actually is used to generate random numbers that those images have been generated from. So let's generate three images and try to use the use the seed, right? So Bad Pit at a food market at dusk. I don't know why I like Bad Pit as a subject today, but why not? So we run this job. And we run it again. And what will actually happen is that Midjourney will generate two random seeds and then I generate the images with the, those seeds. So those images are pretty different between themselves, right? Now I go here and press the envelope. And now I got a message with that particular seed. If I copy the seed and tell me Johnny to generate the same prompt. And give it minus minus seed and the number we just got. And what we got is essentially the same image. Now, if I take that same seed and change the pump a little bit. Keep in mind that it won't be exactly the same image, but it will be much closer. And you can very clearly see here in this image, similar oranges to baskets, those two same baskets, those oranges, very, very similar images, except for the difference in the pump, of course. All right, now let's get to the fun stuff. Midjourney can use other images as sources, or other sort of like inspiration. The way to do this is by giving the URL for an image to Midjourney and then adding a text prompt as we learned above. The easiest way to upload an image is basically to just drag and drop it here and submit. Keep in mind that you have to post the image in a separate message because otherwise you cannot copy the link. So now you copy the link. Let's use the, use the image we just uploaded and use pirate on a ship at sunset. I want to be a pirate. It sounds fun. Our pirate is ready. Look at this. Pirate on a ship. Not a big fan of the hat, but everything else is spot on. All right. So let's upload a version of an image with white. 
So we have one image with the white on the side and another image without the white on the side. Let's generate the same prompt with both images. By default, the image will have a weight of one and it's literally just inspiration. Midjourney won't actually take and use parts of the image as base, but I'll take elements from it and incorporate them in the resulting image. And here you can clearly see parts of the city, part of the background and pretty a lot of white. And here we see the port in the background since it's part of the image. Keep in mind that every little detail of the image will have an impact on the final result. So for example, notice that if the image has a bit of white on the side, you can see that white in the bunker, appearing as the city in the background. And then let's take just the head. And now we no longer have the city or the background. Well, it's gone because it's no longer part of the original image. Still not perfect. It still decided to add some windows, but two out of four, it did not because it did not get inspired from the original image. And here's another cool trick. If mid journey generate an image that is kind of close to what you want, but you don't look like yourself in it, you can feed mid journey its own output as the source for the next image together with your own picture. Also, when generating avatars, don't forget to add descriptors to the prompt. So for example, add beautiful or smiling or serious. That will generate a very different image. And here's the result that we get. I don't know why I have long hair here. If you look at the face here, you'll see that the face is basically distorted. All right, now that you know how to generate awesome avatars, you probably noticed that the biggest problem of the current generation of AI algorithms is the hands and the faces. With hands, there's currently not much you can do. Um, you can try to hide them, you can try to add a hyphen hyphen no on the hands, you can try to experiment with different pumps until something actually works or looks like human. With faces, however, there's another gun coming to our rescue. Generative Facial Prior, or GFP gun. This algorithm essentially understands how a face looks like, and when it notices any issues with the face, it fixes them. It's actually designed to restore old photos, but it works really well on AI images as well. If a face is a little bit distorted, like the one here, you just upload it to GFP gun with the URL for that linked in the description as well. It's free, all you need is a GitHub account and you submit it and within a few seconds you get the face fixed that looks much better than the ai generated one i realize that might be a lot but still that's not nearly everything that midjourney can do for example you can use midjourney to generate an icon for your app this is our application uh, icon i mean this is crazy especially after upscaling it a bit look at this icon it's really beautiful you can generate beautiful dashboards or like user interface design ideas with a simple prompt as well. And there is a beautiful dashboard. I mean, can you imagine using an app that looks like this? That is really beautiful. Or you can ask me join to generate a beautiful landing page. Make sure that you use hyphen hyphen AR three to two in order for it to be landscape instead of a square. And this is our beautiful landing page. Of course, all of those are just inspiration. Okay, since you watched all the way until now, here's a bonus tip. What if you already have an image that is almost what you want, but you don't know the prompt of it? Well, how about a quick way to recreate a prompt from an image? Meet prompt to IMG. You can just upload an image, submit, and within a few seconds, we get a prompt that can generate specifically that image or something very close to it. And this is what we got. A foggy park with benches and trees, tilt shift photo by Mike Birk, Shutterstock contest winner, tonalism, soft mist, high dynamic range and mist. And apparently that should be enough to generate that image in uh, mid journey. All right, that's been a lot, I know, but I really hope that you learned something from this video. Generative AI is here to stay and it definitely came with a splash. Be sure to visit our Discord community and share the most amazing things you can do with this and other algorithms and to play for yourself with all those amazing prompts. Speaking of algorithms, well, don't forget to like this video to tell the YouTube algorithm that more people should see it and subscribe to this channel so you won't miss any of the future digital life hacks. 
And until next time, see ya.